If you're new to embedded system design, wiring your first prototype can be a bit intimidating. Before we get started, let's talk about protecting our electronics. One of the things that will damage electronics quite easily and unexpectedly is electrostatic discharge. Take a look at my lesson on electrostatic discharge and you'll see all of the things that we can that can cause a buildup of electro, electrostatic charge on ourselves, on objects, any of which could jump over to one of the connections on our circuit board and damage the electronics permanently. Um, the other thing that we'd like to talk about is that I do not have power going to this device. I have it unplugged for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, if I were to accidentally, as I'm wiring things up, make a contact between two points that um, that you know would cause voltage short a uh, short of voltages across those pins then I might damage the Raspberry Pi. Another reason why we do this powered down is that some of the output pins on our Raspberry Pi may be configured to be outputs and if we're wiring an input circuit to an output on our Raspberry Pi we could also damage the electronics. Another thing to think about is the, the things that you have on your person. For example, I have a silicon wedding band here, doesn't conduct electricity. My watch band is also a rubber, so it doesn't, or silicon, so it doesn't conduct electricity. You want to avoid anything that might create shorts. That said, let's go ahead and start our wiring of our circuit. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is, well, most people usually start their very first wiring of a switch using just a simple push button. So I have a sim single push button here. It has two conductors on the in or two leads or pins on the back side, which whenever the button is released, it is open. And whenever the button is closed, we have shorted those two pins. This is otherwise known as a normally open switch. We're going to go a little bit further. We are going to wire up this little joystick. Now this little joystick is just buttons, okay? Um, it's not anything like you would find on a game controller where you have variable positions that are able to be read by the processor. Instead, we just simply have binary switches. I can close the switch for up, I can close the switch for down, I can close the switch for left, I can close the switch for right, I can close the switch for pushing it down. That is the mid connection. And then I also have set and reset as my buttons uh, down here on the bottom of the board. Now pushing each one or activating or closing each one of these switches creates a contact between this common and whichever pin is associated with that particular switch. For example, common and up are both connected. Right now they're open, but they're connected whenever I move the, the joystick up. Whenever I release it, there's a disconnection. Whenever the down is pushed, in other words, I push the joystick down, DWN and common are connected. So we talked about in the previous video how the common, we are going to connect that to our ground, and then our GPIO inputs that we're going to read up, down, left, right, those are going to be connected to those pins on this, uh, on this board. So let's refresh ourselves with exactly what circuit we're going to be making here. If you look at this portion of the GPIO bus, so I've got this set of 40 pins that are running along the edge of this bus right here. What we're going to be doing is taking these bottom five pins and connect them to our switch. And so this top pin right, this top one of the five pins right here, that guy is connected to GPIO 12. This pin right here is our ground connection. That is going to be connected to our common. Then we also have the remaining GPIO pins, these bottom three on the outside edge. So we're talking about these outside pins right here. We have GPIO 18. I think that's eight, no, excuse me, that's GPIO 16, we have GPIO 20, and we have GPIO 21. All right, so those are the connections we're gonna make in order to connect our switch to our Raspberry Pi. 
So let's go ahead and do that. In the interest of simplicity, we are going to just use these jumper leads. These are female to female jumper leads, so there's a socket on both ends of each one of these wires that will allow us to connect the pins of the header to the pins of our joystick. We could, and in fact sometimes it's a lot safer and a lot more reliable, to use something like one of these proto boards. These proto boards have connections so that all I need to do would be to insert these pins into this board like so and then run wires, the male connections, from jumper from position to position to position. But right now I want to make sure that this is simple, something that anybody with limited amount of, of equipment can put together. So. First, I'm going to connect the ground, the common. So we come up here, we notice that this is, this is the pin 40, pin 38, pin 36, pin 34, that is our ground connection. So all I do is I simply take the socket of this connection, of this lead, and slip it over that connector, or over that pin on the header. Then I'm going to connect that to the common on my jumper board, or excuse me, on my joystick board. Now I'm going to connect each one of the leads for the other end of each one of those four switches, up, down, left, right. So up I'm going to connect to GPIO 12 which is immediately above that pin 34 where the ground connection is. So the, the up button, that one is going to go to physical pin 32 GPIO 12. And then below the ground, we have the connection to GPIO 16. So on pin 36, I'm going to slide that connector over pin 36. I'm going to connect that to the down, the, to the down lead coming from my circuit board. Then below that, we have pin 38. That's GPIO 20. And so GPIO 20, physical pin 38, we're going to connect to the left switch connection. And then the last one we have is pin 40, and that one is going to be connected to our right connection. Now that we have all of these pins successfully connected, and one of the things to remember is some of these little circuit boards, for example the Raspberry Pi, has leads that come through the bottom of it. So you don't want to rest it on a conductive surface. I have this resting on a 3D printed base that I created. Just went to Thingiverse and printed it out. And then this also has uh, some leads that are connected on the back side of it. If those touch anything that's conductive, you'll short the pins, um, which will give you, it'll simulate basically that you're pressing buttons here whenever you didn't mean to do so. The next thing for us to do is to write a script so we can tell which direction this joystick is being moved.